Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Hoopy, and I'm here to give you an announcement video for this week. We got one announcement, and guess what? It's about Hope Week. If you're in 8th grade, on April 18th at 8pm, that's 3 8 you get priority registration to sign up for Hope Week. And then if you're a current 6th grader or a 7th grader, you can sign up on April 25th for Hope Week. You're not going to want to miss it. That's all I got for you today. I hope you guys have a great Oasis time and have a great week. friends, my name is Mary Spazy and I'm a student director here at Oasis. Here's a super fun fact. We are starting our last series of the 2021 school year. It's been a really crazy year. It's been odd, different, weird, but even so we've had such incredible opportunities to grow in our faith and grow with each other. The title of our series is called Activate and we're going to be using this word a lot, but what does it really mean? Have you ever seen or made some kind of science project where the whole thing goes boom? Think like a volcano and then you add baking soda. Or think of that classic Coca-Cola and you stuff Mentos into it and then it explodes. There's just a plain object, but when you add something, it's set in emotion. It comes alive. There's a reaction. See, the question is, what makes our faith come alive? How can we take our dormant faith and change it to something that's full of life? We're going to dive into God's word and see four ways that we can activate our faith and show the world who Jesus is and the hope that he brings. Real quick, before we really start, think of someone who's really important to you. Maybe it's a cousin or your best friend. You introduce yourself and they introduce themselves. Now you know their name and they mean the world to you. But what caused them to be close to you? I'm betting you had conversations. You learned about their interests and their experiences. You spent time together. You began to share about your life. You opened up about your struggles and you shared the hard times. You laughed together. But all of this happened, you're close because you spent time doing life together. You went through some things, but you grew together. And that person became more than just a person to you. These kinds of relationships are important to have because we're created to live in community with others. These friendships and earthly relationships are important, but there's even a more important relationship that everyone should have, and that's the relationship with God, who's our creator. The cool thing about God is he didn't just create us and walk away and tell us to figure out life on our own. When we look throughout the Bible and read his word, we see that he wants a relationship with us. He wants to get to know you. And this relationship with God is the most important relationship we can have. Maybe you're sitting here and thinking, I don't have a relationship with God. Maybe you don't have a relationship with God that feels close. Maybe you feel that God has abandoned you, or he doesn't want anything to do with you because of things you have done or things you're still doing. If you take one thing away from this message, I hope that you know that God loves you and wants to have a relationship with you. Have you really thought about this? Like truly stop to consider what it means when people say God loves you. Take some time with your small group and think about the other relationships you have in your life. What is similar and what's different between these earthly relationships and your relationship with God?
God is not absent, and He's always present even when we don't see it or feel it. It says in Psalm 139, 14, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in His image. This means that God created you exactly how He wanted you. You're not too broken to be loved by Him. And this is something that I still struggle to fully comprehend and believe at times. He knows all of us so deeply and still chooses us to love us, even though He sees all of our sins and messiness that our lives really are. The question is, do you want a relationship with Him? A relationship that is strong and activated. We can see that when we have a strong relationship with God, other people can see Him through us, and we can change the world. We're going to see that activating our faith means we must first have a relationship with God. Oftentimes, we see our relationship with God like a vending machine. We go to Him when we need something, or we pick and choose what we want and leave the other things. Like we'll always go for like the really good chips over the icky granola bars. We want God to save us, but that's it. We don't always want to follow His rules and His commandments because we can't follow what we want for our lives all the time. But here's the thing that we need to understand. We're broken and we don't always know what's best for ourselves and it's okay to admit that. We don't do the right things all the time. God at the beginning of creation gave us the standard of life to obey Him and bring glory to Him. And if we did that, life would be perfect. But instead, we decided that we knew what was best for our lives rather than trusting God who created us. So when we disobey His commandments, we really put up a barrier between our relationship with us and God. Just like when you disobey your parents or break the law, there's some kind of consequence. You're either going to get grounded or go to jail. In Romans 6.23, it says that the wages or the consequences of sin is death. And our disobedience results in death, which is eternal separation from God. That is what we deserve when we disobey God. See, He did not want this to be the end of our story, so He provided a way for us. And the way was Jesus. He came to earth as a man to live the perfect life that we could never live. He then took our sins on Himself, and He died in our place. He took the punishment that we deserved. But His sacrifice allowed us to have a relationship with God. We can have this relationship with God and not face eternal separation and condemnation from Him but if we just accept this gift of life from Jesus. When we do this by asking God to forgive us of our wrongdoings, by placing our trust in Him and live according to His way instead of our own. God chose to do this for us. But with any relationship, both people need to be all in. It's not going to be a really good relationship if you choose to be someone's friend for only some days of the week and not others. Relationships of any kind take effort and time. God wants to have a relationship with us. He went to such great length to send His Son to pay the price for our disobedience. But if we want this relationship, we've got to put in work too. We need to actually accept this gift of salvation and place our faith and trust in Jesus and live in Him. And that's how we activate our faith. First, we need to have a relationship with God. But as Paul says, we must also be rooted and built up in Him. Like any relationship, it needs to grow. We activate our faith by growing in the knowledge of God and His Word. So kind of like we already said, just like a relationship with a friend, we need to grow in our relationship. But we need to grow with God too. See, part of growing in a relationship with someone means we need to learn about them. And we learn about God through the Bible. And that's how God reveals Himself to us and shows us how to live and shows us how to live a life that glorifies Him. We're going to open up our Bibles and turn to the New Testament, to the book of Colossians. We're going to be in chapter 2, going through verses 6 and 7. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Paul is writing this letter to the church in Colossae. This church was facing a ton of struggles. People were trying to see them with different beliefs and doctrines about God and how to really live for Him. Paul encourages this church to walk in Christ and not in the opinions of other people. We first see that in order to be established or activated in our faith, we need to have a relationship with God. We need to know the words of Christ in order to live like Christ. Activated faith includes growth. Have you ever tried to grow something? My dad and I always grew sunflowers in the summertime when I was really little. We take seeds out of those little paper bags and add the soil in these little egg containers. And I was so excited to see the little green that would grow and the flowers that would get bigger and bigger. 
Just like these plants, these sunflowers, we need to take care of it, right? We also need to take care of our relationship with God in order to grow in our faith. And how do we grow in our faith? As Paul says, we need to be rooted, just like the tree has roots, and those roots help make the tree strong and help it grow. In Psalm 1, 1 through 3, the author gives us this example of us and how a tree grows in our knowledge of God and His Word. It says this, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its seasons, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Did you guys catch that? When we delight in God's word and we meditate on it, we're like the strong tree that's planted by water. We'll have strong roots. The tree is getting nourished and it's fruitful. The tree is strong and can withstand anything. In order for us to grow in our faith, we've got to delight in God's word. When we delight in something, we think about it all the time. We want to be around it because we see it as valuable and worth our time and energy. We need to delight in God's word, not just let the Bible sit on our shelves collecting dust or open it on the occasional Sunday morning or Wednesday at Oasis. We need to read it during the week. It's got to be in our heads. We know that this is a way to learn about God and know how to live a life that honors Him. I get it though. Sometimes it is hard to read God's Word because it's hard to understand sometimes. But this is such a great time to ask your parents, ask your small group leaders. We all want to help you grow in your faith. An activated faith means learning about God and delighting in it. The next way we see this passage is that in order to grow in our faith, we need to meditate on God's Word. Not only do we need to delight in God's Word, but we need to meditate on it. Meditate is not really a word we use or see often. And when you think of it, maybe you're thinking of like chanting and breathing deeply and weird incense. That's not what I'm talking about. Meditate means something so much deeper. Meditate is to think deeply or carefully about something. So when we meditate on God's word, we deeply and carefully think about it throughout the day. When anything in life happens, no matter what comes our way, we think about what God's word says when we're dealing with certain situations or just living a life that honors him. In order to meditate on it, we need to know it. We need to know his word, planted like a seed in our hearts. And as we continue to think about God's word, it continues to grow and we become stronger. And this is how we grow in our faith in our relationship with Christ. We love and value God's word because this is how our relationship with him is built by learning about him, his way and his truth and his purpose for our lives. We build a relationship with God just like you build a relationship with your friends. God wants a deep personal relationship with you. Do you want the same? And are you willing to put in the time and effort into the relationship? This relationship is the greatest you can ever have because it's with the creator of the universe. And he gives us good things and helps us when life gets hard. He's the one we can turn to when we have unanswered questions and need comfort. He loves you and me so much that he would sacrifice his son so that we can have a relationship with him and experience his love and peace. And he is so worth living for. This is 100% invested. It's through this relationship that our faith can be activated. I'm telling you, there was a time I did not read my Bible, and I can clearly see how this was really affected my life because of how different I was. I didn't know his truth, and I was not established in a firm understanding of who God was. It's so important to walk in the truth of who he is. And if I did this when I was younger, I would have been able to know what he said about different situations in my life. The question is, do you want to have a strong relationship with God? One that other people begin to notice that you're different, that you have a joy and a hope that only God can give. Do you want to have a relationship with God where that you're closer to him than ever before? First, I need you to ask yourself, do I have a relationship with God? And have I truly placed my trust in him for forgiveness of my sins? Do I live for him instead of living for myself? Or do I live for myself? Asking yourself these questions is the first step to having a relationship with God. And if you're here and just listening to this message, if you want to have a relationship with God, talk to your small group leaders, reach out to someone about these questions you just asked. And if you're here and if you have placed your faith in Jesus, 
but your relationship with him is kind of cold and distant and it's not really where you want it to be. I encourage you to start reading God's word regularly. Begin to learn about who God is and deepen your relationship with him by talking to him through prayer. And if you are just like, Mary, I don't even know where to start. Ask your small group leader, ask me. And here's the great news, you're not alone. God wants a relationship with you and is willing to walk alongside of you no matter what. It's through him that we can live a life that honors him. We're gonna take some time and just talk about this. How can you as a group keep each other accountable to grow this weekend? Can you share prayer requests and praise reports in your group chats? Share areas in which you're struggling? Maybe you guys can send each other scripture. Go ahead and talk with your small group of ways that you guys can hold each other accountable in your growth this week. My prayer for each and every one of you is that your relationship with God is stronger and that your faith is activated so that the world can see the love of God through you and that they can see the hope and the joy that he brings. Over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna see how we can live out our faith. But in order to do anything, we need to first have a relationship with him to grow in the knowledge of God and his word. That's all I have for you. We love you lots and we'll see you next week.